Well, it's my pleasure to bring up Brother Robert. Get it right? Robert, Robert Keaton this evening from Rock of Ages. Brother Roger, just come ahead and bring the meat. Amen. God bless you, Brother Lee. It's good to be with you this morning. Uh, not necessarily on these circumstances. Uh, I'd much rather your pastor and Miss Janet be here as well. But uh, we do appreciate the privilege uh, to be able to be of uh, help to them, to be of service to them, and uh, pray for them uh, regularly. Uh, since Miss Janet fell the other day, and just praying that and thanking God for the answer to prayer. Amen. She's continually improving. So praise the Lord for that. Uh, spoke with Brother Pinion yesterday for just a little bit on the phone, I said to Brother Fred informed me that he's preaching tonight after I preached this morning and that Brother Fred said he'd do his best to straighten out all the mess that I make this morning. And Brother Pinion said, yeah, that's what I heard as well. And so uh, anyhow, uh, I'm going to try to make a big mess for Brother Fred. No, Brother Fred needs a lot to do tonight, right folks? Do I get an amen? But I'm not getting many amens there, so uh, I better not mess up too bad this morning then, amen. Uh, but God is so good, and thank God for His mercy and His grace, amen. Uh, praise the Lord that, uh, again, that Miss Janet is improving. And uh, I asked Brother Pinion, I asked him... Uh, when it first happened, uh, after the first day or so there in the hospital, how he was holding up because, you know, he just went through the major uh, surgery just before this. And uh, I guess that I told him, I said, I guess God just put you through the stress test to make sure what he had done for you is holding up. And uh, he said, it is just tiring. He told me yesterday, he said, I have found out how to sleep well. He said, you just wear out till there ain't nothing left and you go home and sleep good. Amen. And so uh, he's, been get, he's been getting a lot of that lately. So uh, I do continue to pray for them, hold them up before the Lord. But uh, thank the Lord for who Jesus is. Amen. Uh, he, he's so much, and that's what I want to preach about this morning on the thought of who is Jesus to you? Who is Jesus to you? Uh, if you've got your Bibles with you this morning, open with me. I'll start out in Matthew chapter 16, a uh, pretty familiar passage of Scripture. And a uh, little, little different message than what I normally preach. I've only got 26 points this morning. And so I figured that's enough for Brother Fred to straighten out a whole lot this, uh, tonight, Brother Roger. But, uh, and, and again, when I say 26, it's just statements is all they are with a few verses to go with them. But uh, I think you'll follow what I'm saying when I get started here. But in Matthew chapter uh, six, uh, thir 16, verse 13 to verse 15, if you don't mind, we'll pray and then we'll get started. Father, we come to you. Lord, we just ask your blessing upon your word this morning. I pray that, God, you would speak to our hearts through it. I pray that, God, you would, Lord, challenge us from your word this morning. Thank you for all that Jesus is to us that are saved. And, Father, for all that he can be to those that are not saved, if they'll just put their trust and their faith in him. I pray that, God, you would just bless now, Lord. Meet with us, Lord. Have your will in your way. And Father, we'll praise you and thank you for all that you do in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> in Matthew chapter 16, beginning in verse 13, notice what the Word of God says. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say thou art Jer uh, John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? Uh, that statement, whom say ye that I am? The I am. If you look in Luke chapter 9 and verse 18, the Bible says, And it came to pass as he was alone praying, his disciples uh, were with him, and he asked them, saying, Whom say the people that I am? Uh, and then you find in Exodus chapter 3 and verse 14, And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. Uh, he is the I am. Amen. Uh, he's the I am of whatever you need this morning. Uh, whatever is needed in your life this morning. He's the I am that can take care of it. Amen. Uh, I don't know about you, but uh, uh, when when Jesus was speaking to Pilate, or Pilate was speaking to Jesus, he said, no, that, Knowest thou not that I have the power to give thee life or to take it? And Jesus said, You'd have none at all. 
except to be given thee of my Father. Amen. He said, I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it up again. Amen. He's the only one that can make the claims like that. Uh, see, I mean, Jesus had never been in that territory before of death. Amen. But he knew. Amen. He's God. Amen. There's nothing. The Bible says in Luke 1 and verse 37, for with God nothing shall be impossible. Uh, thank God for the God that we serve this morning. Amen. The Savior that gave His life to redeem you and I. Amen. Uh, that nothing, even though it's something He's never experienced. Amen. He don't have to experience to know that He is able. Now unto Him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think through the power that worketh in us. Amen. And that power is Jesus Christ, amen, working in our lives. John chapter 8 and verse 24, And I said, Therefore unto you, you shall, uh, that you shall die in your sins, for if you believe not that I am He, uh, you shall die in your sins. Uh, we see in John chapter 18 and verse 6, and as soon as uh, he had uh, said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground when they came to take him, amen. And he said, who are you looking for? He said, and they said, Jesus, amen. He said, I am he, amen. And the soldiers all set, fell back and fell upon their faces, amen. He's the great I am this morning. And so I want to ask you this question, or you ask yourself this question this morning, who is Jesus to you? And you fill in the blank, amen. But I just, uh, some words and, and 26, Sixers. I didn't go by the letters of the alphabet. I, no, it sounds like I did, but I didn't uh, because I tell you what, uh, just I was looking at some things that he is to me. Uh, do, you ask most people, and I've said this before, you ask most people, who is Jesus to you? And the answer is simple. He's my Savior. But folks, if that's all He is to you, we're missing out. And I've said that before in this pulpit. He's so much more than just Savior. He's so much more than that to you and I. That's just entry level, amen. And, and we need to get beyond the entry level to, to growing and maturing in Him because He's the I am there of whatever you need in your life this morning. And I think the first thing I want you to see this morning, I thank God that He's the searcher of the heart, amen. Uh, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. God knows the heart of man. Amen. Even, even Noah and his sons and his wife and their daughters. Amen. Uh, uh, their, their sons, daughters, uh, wives. Uh, even every one of them. Even the eight that went into the ark. It, the Bible declares that the imagination of man's heart is only evil continually. Amen. I, I don't know about you, but hey, my heart's deceitful and desperately wicked, the Bible says. And who can know it? Amen. When we think that we've arrived, we need to remember what Saul uh, Paul said, Paul said, I brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended in Philippians 3 and verse 13. He said, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are, which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And so this morning we need to realize that, that he's the searcher of the heart. Amen. When God goes to bring in, uh, 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 troubles to the heart, amen. When he goes to bring in remembrance to our heart, of things that we've done that we've not confessed. Amen. We need to give heed to it. Let him have his way. The, the psalmist said it this way in Psalms 44 and verse 21, Shall not God search this out? For he knoweth the secrets of the heart. Amen. You may have something pressed back, buried deep in your heart. Amen. And God brings it to surface. Amen. We need to confess it and get it right. Amen. Get it under the blood of Jesus Christ. In Psalms 10 and verse 17, uh, Lord, thou hast heard the desire of the humble. Wilt thou, thou wilt prepare their heart. Thou wilt cause their ear to hear. Psalm 17 and verse 3. Thou hast proved mine heart. Thou hast visited me in the night. Thou hast tried me and shalt find nothing. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. Then we see in Psalms 26 and verse 2. Examine me, O Lord. The psalmist cries out, Amen. And I tell you what, if we want him to, if we want him to, if we open to him and say, Search me, O Lord, and prove me, and try the reins of my heart, Amen. That's what God wants us to do, Amen. To come before him and desire him to, to search our heart, Amen. He will do it whether we ask or not. But hey, when we come asking, Amen, God, God wants that, Amen. He wants us to humble ourselves before him and, and realize that we need him more than we realize in our lives. Not only is he the searcher of the heart, 
But this morning, Brother Kenneth, he's the fulfiller of all your needs. Amen. It's not the world. It's not, it's not our companions. It's not, it's not our friends. It's not, our, it's not this world that's going to do it. Amen. He's the fulfiller of our needs this morning. Philippians 4 and verse 19, But my God shall supply all your needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We need to see that this morning, that He's the fulfiller of all our needs. Amen. And we find it so much in our churches today that, that people in our churches are turning to the world, they're turning to things, they're, they're turning to materialism, they're turning to all kinds of, of things in this world to try to satisfy the longing, the desires in their hearts. Amen. And the heart's deceitful, as we said a while ago, desperately wicked, who can know it? We need to get back to turning to Him. Amen. He's the fulfiller of the needs this morning. He's the one that can meet any need that you've got this morning. If we just, it says in the book of James, casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you. Well, I tell you, what, we know that, but sometimes we just need to be reminded, amen, that when we've got needs, we need to get it to Him, amen, that we can come boldly before the throne of grace to obtain mercy, to help in time of need. Amen. He wants us to come. He said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We've got to realize this morning that He's the fulfiller of our needs. Not only that, but third thing, He's, he's the light that shineth in our darkness. Well, I thank God that he, his, his Word, amen, that Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, amen. I'm so glad that the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, amen, it did shine in my heart and showed me my sin and showed me my wickedness and showed me my, my insufficiency and showed me that He's the one that can take care of what I need this morning. In John chapter 8 and verse 12, it says, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. We thank God for, he said in John, 1 John chapter 1 and verse 7, he says, If we'll walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanseth us from all our sins. Amen. Well, what an invitation to, to see Him and to recognize Him as the light. Amen. The light that shines. Amen. The light that shines in our darkness. Amen. And the, I tell you what, I thank God that, 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 that Brother Pinion and Sister Pinion had the light of Christ. Amen. To shine in their light during these dark days that they're going through. Amen. Because without that, there's not much hope to look into this, uh, to the, the medical field or any other other field this morning, and Jesus Christ that, that is able to do it, amen, we've been quoted that, amen, but God is that light, amen, that lighteth our darkness. You ever had any dark days? I guarantee you have, but it don't matter how dark it is, amen, when he shows up, he brightens it up, amen, he brightens it up, amen, the darkest of nights, amen. And it's always they say it's always the darkest before the dawn but I tell you what when he shows up it can be midnight amen and it's as clear as day Our God is able to do that this morning not only is that he's the water for your thirsty soul that can only quench a physical thirst and it don't always do that but I tell you what the thirst that he creates in us he can, he can quench that thirst and nothing else can. Nothing this world has. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I mean, you, you can get all the, the, the drinks with electrolytes and sports drinks and all of this and none of them work, amen, uh, to quench the thirst that God puts in a soul, amen, to desire to seek after Him. He says in, in, in John chapter 7, verse 37 and 8, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. And he that believeth on me, as the Scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Amen. And the thirst that he created in me on December the 10th, 1981, 1130 on a Thursday night, when I drank of the water of his and he saved this old wretch, But the time, the difference that he made in my life has helped me to be an impact and just be the water boy for a bunch of others. <laughs> 
I'll be the water boy any day, amen, to carry the word of God, the word of, I mean, the water that satisfies the soul, amen. That's what he's given us, Brother Lynn, to do, to, to be a water boy, to carry his word, the water of his word. But you knew to remind by the washing of the water of the word, amen. The word of God that's able to quench that desire that the world, that the world tries to satisfy, but it cannot do. He's not only the water for the thirsty soul, but He's the bread for the hungry soul. John chapter 6 and verse 35, And Jesus said unto them, I am, there's that I am again, the bread of life. He, he's the only one who can make these I am claims, amen. Uh, he's, he's the water for the thirsty soul. He's the bread for the hungry soul. I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. He said in John 6 and verse 48, he says, I am the bread of life. Amen. He's that manna from heaven. He's that one that satisfies. He's that one that, that takes care of, of, the, of the, 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 the emptiness that's inside. Amen. I tell you what, you've been so hungry that you just felt like you was, I mean, just empty. Just like, I mean, there was nothing in you. I mean, so hungry. You just, and you sit down and eat till you're stuffed. Amen. Till you hurt and get up from the table. Amen. And it's not satisfaction. When I overeat both time, I'm not satisfied. I'm miserable. I have never sat down and feasted upon the Word of God and the Lord Jesus Christ and been miserable afterwards. When I sit down and feast on Him, I leave satisfied. I leave content. I, I leave rejoicing in what He has done. Amen. Because He's the bread of life that meets that need in our souls. He's the truth for the deceived soul. Well, I'll tell you what, I don't know about you, but I was deceived for 27 years. Thinking religion, thinking membership in a church, thinking baptism had taken care of my problems. But none of those things could change the way I lived. But when the truth, if the truth shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. When you receive the truth of God's Word, what God's Word does for your soul, amen. It sets you free from the hold that sin and this world has upon you, amen. I'm not saying that the world and sin can't draw and entice. It can, amen. But we're more than conquerors through Him that loved us and gave Himself for us, amen. We're... We're able to overcome because of His Word. Amen. We're able to defeat the enemy because of His Word. Greater is He that is in us than he that is in the world. Proverbs 2 and verse 6. For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of His mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Uh, James says it this way, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth all men liberally and upbraideth not, but let him ask in faith nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed of the wind. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let not that man think that he shall receive anything of God. But it says, But let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he hath been exalted. Thank God for the, for the, for the truth that he gives, that, that, that for the deceived soul, amen. For those that are deceived, they get to thinking that, hey, and, and that's not just the lost. You don't have to raise your hand, but I wonder how many the old devils talked you into thinking, man, you can do this with your eyes closed. You don't even need to pray about it. I've got this ministry. It's called the In Over Your Head Ministry. I'm the cap, I'm the president of it. Amen. I'm kind of like Peter. I'm always stepping out, st sticking my foot in my mouth and stuff like that. And I'm always crying out, "Lord, save me! Get me out of the mess! I got me in again." Amen. You'd think I. You would think it. Almost seventy. I start keep saying I'm sixty nine, but it's seventy's just around the corner now. And you think I would have learned by now, Brother Roger? to pray first. And I do most of the time. But there's those times, that, man, you've done this a hundred times. You've done it, I mean, you've done it so much you can do it with your eyes closed. And I found out, yeah, you're right, I can get in a mess over my head with my eyes closed so easy. It's the truth. He's the truth for the deceived soul. 
The old devil's going to deceive you. He still deceives us. Amen. That's, that's his tactic. That's his way. Amen. To deceive. Amen. To get you to thinking that you can do it without God. Amen. And we can't. We need him every day, every moment of our lives. Proverbs chapter 3. We usually just quote verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. But verse 7, Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. The Bible talks in the book of Hebrews of departing from an evil heart of unbelief. That unbelief, that, 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 that not believing that you need Him, that you can do it. Amen. You can't. It's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Number seven, He's the way for the lost soul. He said in John 14, 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Isaiah 48 and verse 17 says, Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. Romans 2 and verse 4 says, Or despisest thou the riches and good of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? Amen. I thank God for, for his, him being the way, amen, for showing us the way, for, for being the one to direct our path, being the one that will light our path, being the one that will show us, being the one that will give us not only knowledge, but understanding to apply the knowledge that he gives us. Amen. It's his wisdom. It's His way. Thank God He's the life for the sinner in sins. In John chapter 3 and verse 15, He says, For whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. John 6 and verse 54, the Bible says, Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up again at the last day. Amen. Our life, it's not, it's not, it's not that we, in the communion they become uh, the, the, literal, uh, the, the literal body and blood of Christ. I mean, it's a remembrance of what he did on the cross, that when we accept his death, burial, and resurrection, his payment for our sins, amen, we're taking in, in, uh, into ourselves him, amen, because we're accepting him into our life for our forgiveness of our sins. Amen. And because of that, because of that, we have life. Thank God that He gives life to those that are dead in their trespasses and sins. Paul said it this way in Romans 7 verse 24. He said, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? We looked at the bread, but let me look at the manna. He's not just the bread that satisfies a hunger, but he's, a, he's the manna. He's the provision from heaven for our needs. In John 6 and verse 41, it says, The Jews murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. It's not a bread that's produced here, but it's a bread that's out of this world, amen. I mean, I, I, I like just plain old light bread, Brother Roger. Debbie likes all them seven seeds and 20 seed breads and all that. that... And then, then she has to pick seed out of her teeth the rest of the day, amen. I thank God the manna that he gives, amen. It don't cause any after effects other than life, joy, peace, um, contentment. I mean, boy, the fruits of the Spirit that his bread, the manna brings forth in our lives, amen, when we feast upon his word. Psalms 107 verse 9, For he satisfieth the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Boy, that's that manna from on high. Thank God he's also the shield during Satan's attacks. <clears throat> well, I can't thank him enough for that, Brother Land. The shield during Satan's attacks. 
He said, taking the shield of faith, amen. Well, that's not our faith, that's his faith. He give, he's given unto us that, that, that portion of faith, amen. He gave us the faith to trust and to save us, amen. We didn't muster that up, he did it, amen. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, amen. And so when we read his word and he gives us the faith, amen, he gives us the faith to stand when the devil attacks. <clears throat> Ephesians 6 and verse 16 Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye may be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Proverbs 2 and verse 7. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buffer to them that walk uprightly. Amen. He's a shield. Amen. He is that fortress that we can go to. He's a shield. The devil attacks. Amen. It's not what I can do. It's what he can do. I think of Brother and Sister Pinion on this next couple. He's the calm in your troubles. Psalms 107, verse 29, He maketh the storm a calm, so that the waves thereof are still. Matthew 8 and 26, He saith unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there's a great calm. But it, not only is he the calm in our troubles, he's the peace in our storms, and that's different. I thank God, Brother Tom, when he calms the storm. And that shows me how great he is. But you know what shows me how much greater He is? It's when He gives the peace in the storm. The storm's still raging. But He gives the peace. That peace that passeth understanding. That, that peace that we can't explain it, but we can sure experience it. Mark 4 and verse 39, And he arose and rebuked the wind and saith unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a calm. There was a calm. But notice in, in Mark chapter 5 and verse 34, it says, And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. I think of Job when talking about a peace in a storm. You read Job chapter 1 and chapter 2 when God allowed Satan to touch Job. First allowed him to touch everything that he had, took his ten children, took all of his wealth. Chapter 2, he allows Satan to touch his health. To take, I mean, covered him with boils from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. And then in the following chapters, Job's, Job's miserable comforters. Even, even his wife came and said, Retainest thou thine integrity? Why don't you just curse God and die? But Job had a peace in the midst of his storm. The storm was still raging. The friends, the friends hadn't shown up quite yet when Mrs. Job spoke. He had done lost everything, and yet there was a peace that he had that he said, The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord in the midst of his trouble. Amen. That's that peace that passeth understanding. I think every time that I've spoken with Brother Pinion since Sister Janet had fallen, even, even before when he's getting ready to go in for a heart valve replacement, I can't remember how many videos he said he watched on that heart valve replacement. I watched one on a knee replacement. That was enough for me. I didn't want to watch another one before I went in. I, said, I knew what they was going to do. It did not look pretty. <laughs> but y'all know, Brother, Brother Pinion just had peace going in. The confidence of his peace was not in the doctors. It was not in the procedures. It was in the Lord that can give the peace in the midst of the storm.
spoken with him while Sister Janet's been in the hospital and still there, even yesterday. Hey, just... All credit's due to the one that does the giving of peace, the Lord Jesus Christ. I'd like to skip this next one, but I need to share it. He's the wisdom that blots out my ignorance. <laughs> you, ever, you ever do something and after you get it done, you say, that was dumb. <laughs> I mean, we know better by His Word. We know better by what He does in our lives. I don't know if it gets any better. Anybody here been saved over 50 years? Does it get any better? Do we still do dumb things then? <laughs> Uh, 43 years and I still find myself saying that was dumb why didn't I listen to what I, and the Lord tries to direct our steps but we go our way he's the wisdom that blots out my ignorance Proverbs 1 and verse 7 the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom but fools despise wisdom and instruction I think this is more the men than it is the women. That you open up that thing that's got to be put together and it comes with this big sheet that unfolds multiple times. And that's just to pour the parts out on, is it not, fellas? <laughs> we, we pour all them parts out. There's no way we can read it because it's covered in all these parts. And, and that's the way we do so many times with the instruction sheet that God's given us to live our life. We, we don't read the instructions. And it never fails when I'm putting that intricate thing together, Brother Roger, that I get so far into it, and this piece won't go in until I take all these other pieces back off. And that's the way God's wisdom works in our lives. A lot of times we get ahead of God, and God makes us back up and go back to where we messed up. He, he don't just let me fit it in here, realize I messed up back there, fit it in here, and go on. I got to go back. Sometimes just go back and say, hey, brother, I'm sorry for what I did. Sometimes just go back and say, I should have handled that situation different. God gives, thank God, He blots out my ignorance. When I say blots it out, He gives the wisdom to make the corrections. He gives the wisdom to do what's right. In Psalms 51 and verse 1, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to Thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of Thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Transgressions, rebellion. The psalmist is saying, when I rebelled against you back there, God blotted out. Now, and the only way it can be blotted out is you make it right. You go back. Those that you offended, those that you hurt, those that... I believe sometimes we've got this idea in Christianity that, well, I realize I did wrong, I just confess it to God and go on, but what about those that we hurt? What about those that we did wrong? What about those that... The healing's not done until we make things right. Till we restore, till we do, till we... Psalms 51 and verse 9. Hide thy face from my sin and blot out all mine iniquities. Amen. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 1 verse 20. Wisdom crieth without she uttered her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse in the opening of the gates of the city. She uttered her words saying, How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? And scorners delight in their scorning. And fools hate knowledge. He said, Turn ye at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. But because you have said it not all my counsel and would my reproof, 
He says, Behold, I also will laugh at your calamity. When your fear cometh as desolation and destruction cometh upon you as a whirlwind, then shall you call upon me, but I will not answer. God gives the wisdom to blot out our ignorance. We just got to respond to the wisdom that He gives. He's the strength in my weakness. I'm going to just read a few of them. He's the satisfaction in my despair. He's the joy in my gloom. He's the shepherd for your guidance. He's the champion against your foes. I've got scripture for all these, but just for sake of time this morning. He's the sacrifice for my atonement. He's the redeemer for your restoration. He's the resurrection for your eternal body. He's the shelter for your safety. He's the propitiation for your sins. He's the solution for your problems. Casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you. Thank God He's the convictor of our conscience. And He's, number 26, He's the door to heaven. Amen. Back to Ma uh, Matthew chapter 16 in verse 13 through 15. When Jesus came... Into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said unto him, Some say thou art John the Baptist, some say Elias, and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, That's all good, but whom saith ye that I am? It's one thing for us to know what Everybody else says he is. But who is Jesus to you this morning? You know, what Jesus is to Brother Tom, I, that, that's great for Brother Tom, but it don't do me no good. He has to be it for you. He wants to be all of these things for you. How many of y'all, when you were little and growing up, mom and dad wanted to do something for you, but you was going to do it yourself? Now, most of us older, we remember watching our grandkids now. No, that you try, to, you try to feed it to them. They don't want you to feed it. They want the spoon, and they can't get the spoon in the right place. God's wanting to do for us because we can't get things in the right place. We need to let him be all that he wants to be in our lives. And that's why Paul said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. We talk all the time about dying to self. That's not what Paul's talking about, amen? Amen. It is in a sense, but God doesn't want you to come up here and, and die on the altar. He wants you to come up here and say, God, I want you to be all these things in my life. He wants you to allow Him. He, Brother Kenneth, He's not for any of these things up on us, but it's available to us. You have not because you ask not. Ask that your joy might be full. I don't, you don't have to raise your hand, but I wonder how many would say this morning, and just in your heart, I know he's all those things that you said because we see it in his word, but I've not let him be all of those things in my life, and I need it. That's the invitation this morning. Will you come 
and let him have his way in your heart this morning. If you would stand with me, heads bowed, eyes closed. I believe so many times we get used to a, a song of invitation. She's coming to the piano, but I don't want her to start playing right now. I want us to respond to what God's Word has said this morning. I wonder how many would be willing to step out and come and say, God, I want all of these. I want you to be all of these things in my life. And God, I'm yielding to you to let you have your way. Would you come this morning? Would you allow God to have his way? Would you allow God to do his work in your heart and in your life? Some are at the altar this morning. What about you? Who is Jesus to you? But whom say ye that I am? Is he the I am of all those things we mentioned this morning in your life? Would you come? Would you yield to him? We sing this song sometimes. It's it's best for him to have his way with thee. That means follow the instructions. It means give him the right place in your life. Yield to him. Sister, if you want to begin playing, you can. Would you mind?